Hey guys, it's Emily. Welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for coming back today. Another Ziggy sleeping. Well, it's the same Ziggy, but he's still sleeping. And this is going to be my update for my beauty budget. If you're new here, I do a $200 monthly budget on beautiful things. So that is clothing, makeup, other just like toiletries, things that I need on an everyday. And it's supposed to help me be better about buying the things that I need, which is clothing and things for my wardrobe versus things that I want, which are like beauty and makeup. Now I work at Sephora, so it's very hard for me to abstain from beauty and makeup. And I'm gonna go into what happened this month and my thought processes behind it. And then at the end, I'll show you like what I bought. And so the first thing I wanna get off the bat is that February was insane for me. So I worked a ton and not only did I work a lot of hours, so I was like just really busy, but I was also traveling a lot. I was going to a lot of different Sephora's throughout my training. We had a lot of places where we would like meet as a leadership team and we didn't have like a home base because our store was being built. Like it didn't even have walls at the beginning of February. So it was just an insane month because I was traveling to a bunch of different Sephora's. I think I went to like three or four different stores throughout that month. And I, of course, when you get to a new store, you're just like so excited about all the things. And then we set up our brand new store. And in that process, I was just like excited about everything. And so my month of February was very beauty focused because I was really in it. We had hotel training where we were learning all about makeup and skincare and had all these people from around the district like training us and me training our new cast and then setting up the store and then traveling to other stores. It was just a crazy, incredible month. Not surprised it went this route, but I am kind of a little disappointed because in January, you guys know, I had a hard time spending my beauty budget. I wanted to buy really nice quality things. I wanted to invest in some pieces. Some things didn't work out for me. I just couldn't make up my mind. And you guys know I'm trying to spend more of the needs versus wants. And I ended up just not buying anything in the month of January. I only spent like $8 in the month of January. So whatever was left over in January moved into February. And so in February, when I was having all this beauty stuff happen, I had this crazy big budget to use. And I think in my head, I was just like, well, I'm safe because I have this big budget to use so I can splurge on some new beauty items. And so at the beginning of February, I had $391 to use in February, which is crazy that's a huge budget in any month like in all, any year to have to use to spend and i took that as a good cushion that it's okay for me to spend this much on beauty products because it's a brand new position i'm in a brand new store i did look over my collection my makeup collection and notice some holes that i thought would be good to kind of spruce up before going into this new store so there was just a lot of reasoning behind why I did what I did. Now I didn't have a lot of spare time in February, so I didn't have a lot of time to like browse the internet or look for clothes in my, I know my original thought was I'm gonna go into stores to like look at clothes, try things on, but I just honestly didn't have the time to do it. And I ended up going with another subscription service, which I'll post the video about that in, in the, one of the next coming videos. But I did end up trying Stitch Fix because it was a way for me to go clothes shopping, but not to have to go anywhere. So it was a super easy process for it to come to me versus me going to them and trying on a bunch of things that may not work. So it did end up working out. I did end up finding two tops. So when my Stitch Fix came, I actually had enough in my budget to buy all of it if I wanted to, which was really exciting because I was like, well, if it, works out and everything works that i can buy everything and get five pieces of my wardrobe which is huge because for me buying like one top like totally changes my wardrobe because i just don't have a lot like i don't have a lot in my wardrobe right now and so having just one or two new tops really spices things up and makes me excited to put on clothes in the morning so i did find two tops through stitch fix which i'm so excited about you'll see in that video and i think it was a good way for me to add some clothing into my wardrobe, make me make those decisions. It really helped me fill that need where I needed clothes, I needed tops, and I was able to do it without spending a ton of time. And I'm still excited about them and they look like quality pieces. I've already worn them quite a few times. They've gotten their use. They're definitely a great addition to my wardrobe. So that is where I went with the, the clothing route. 
but I still don't think that's the route I want to go. At the times that I had gone online and looked up like clothing brands that I want to support and look up ethical companies and just what I like in my wardrobe, which is a lot of staples and a lot of just like mix and matching of colors. There was a few brands I'm really excited about trying, but my thing is, is that I would not fit in their clothes. So they only go up to like a size extra large. Some pieces of theirs goes up to 2X, but I think I really want to focus right now on health and maybe investing some of my budget into like exercise clothing versus like a wardrobe clothing because the things in my wardrobe I want to be able to use for a long period of time and I don't want to lose weight and then having to buy new pieces and I think my plan is to spend a good chunk of that budget on exercise clothing that's another area that I really don't have much of I have like leggings and t-shirts but I would love to invest in some like sports bras and like some actual exercise gear because my goal is to lose enough weight or be fit enough that I can go to the clothing brands that I want to support. And I know some people are are wanting to be all about body positivity and inclusion when it comes to sizing. But part of it for me is I want to be healthy and I know to be healthy I need to be smaller. That's just me. Like I want to lose weight because for me and my health and what my doctors have said I need to lose weight. And I have lost weight but I want to continue that journey before investing in really nice quality long-term pieces. So I think sort of that is where my mindset is. I have been exercising. I have been using our home gym. I have been going for a walk. We have been going swimming. So I think that's where my thought process is at the moment is to spend my budget on workout gear, which is still part of my budget. It's still clothing and then be able to lose weight and have the things that I need to get fit and to exercise. And that way I can save maybe my budget for a couple months and invest in some really nice quality ethical companies, ethical clothing, because I'm really excited about having some really good long-term pieces, but I also don't want to get those long-term pieces until I'm at the size that I want to be. Moving on to what I spent and what I bought in February, so the first purchase I made was at Sephora in a different location that I'm used to, and they had the full Charlotte Tilbury line, which you guys know, I am a huge Charlotte Tilbury fan. The store that I left and the store that I'm currently at only has like the little end cap, and this store had the whole entire thing. It was, it was beautiful. Um, so I did end up purchasing two things when I was there. The first thing was their Airbrush Flawless Finishing Powder. I got the Shane and one and oh my gosh i'm not regretting this purchase whatsoever it is kind of pricey but i have been loving it it's been such a great addition especially if i've gotten a little heavy with the bronzer or heavy with the blush or i just want like that flawless finish without adding coverage like this has been a great addition to my makeup it's something i didn't really have and i'm very happy that i did end up getting it this product though which is the charlotte tilbury contour wand is nice but i could have lived without it i've been using it it looks like poop when you put it on but it blends out to a beautiful finish it's just something i don't need and i feel like i'm not getting a lot of uses out of like it feels already like pretty empty and i've only had it for a month so to pay that much for a product that's only gonna last me a couple months this isn't worth it to me because i also have loved the one that i got cvs last year and that one lasted a decent amount of time but it was like a third of the price so I'm using it I don't see myself repurchasing it though but I did end up getting it when I was there because I oh I have always wanted to try it and I can say that it's really good but I don't think it's worth the money the next thing I got was when our store was still in its soft opening we didn't even have our grand opening yet and I ended up getting the lawless the one palette you guys know I have the little one from Wallace too they're beautiful eyeshadows that I've been using them a ton and then this one went on sale and I was like well I want to get it because I love their brand and I like the shadows that, and I already knew I like the shadows and it was a good price especially since I have a discount I can put that on top of the sale price so I did end up getting the one palette and they are not disappointing I used it today it's just like nice soft pinks which I love it has really great warm tones and golds it has some really great just like base colors here I like this really bright yellow as well. This row right here is like, like me in a palette. So I have really been enjoying it. 
and I'm really excited to play with it some more. This thing was from me when I dropped it. I don't know if you can see, but there's like a little dip in there. That was from when I dropped it, but it's everything else stayed fine. Um, but this has been a great addition. I really felt like I needed some eyeshadows, especially since two of my palettes had kind of seen their expiration date. So, you know, I love my Milani palette so much, but they had gotten to almost a three year mark, three to four year mark, and they weren't just performing very well. So I had just decluttered those and then this went on sale. So it was like perfect timing and our store just opened. So I just wanted to get something. And so I did end up getting this and I've been loving it. And it's been such a great addition to my collection. Um, the next thing I got was online from Sephora because I realized I needed some new brushes. I had decluttered quite a few of them and I've, there was a lot of holes for my brushes and Sephora is redoing their brush line. So a lot of their brushes went half off. And so since it was half off, I also get a discount on top of that. So I did get quite a few brushes. I think it's seven brushes, nine brushes. I've got nine brushes and I'm really excited that I did because the brushes that I still have are Sephora collection that I had like four years ago and they still look brand new. So I know they were an investment I spent $77 on brushes, but just like two, like if you bought these two on their own at regular price, like this would have been like $77 and I was able to get like all of these. So it was such a good price. It was something that I wanted to invest in anyways. And so I did. So again, I'm not regretting this purchase whatsoever, but I didn't think I needed all of them all at once. So the first one I have is their number 55, which is a great like foundation brush. It's applies foundation very thinly so it's not going to give you like crazy full coverage i've been liking more for like powder foundation because it's just like a good size it's not like a giant powder brush you know you can still like control where it's going so i have been really enjoying it that way um i don't use a foundation heavy enough for this to actually work with so you guys know i use a tinted moisturizer so for me it works for a powder but i don't think i would use it for what i have as a liquid foundation or bb cream this one, however, I have been enjoying for blush. This is the number 49 angled blush brush. And it's just a really good one that you can like really get in there and have like the perfect like shape for your cheeks. Um, it's just really, again, flawless finish. It really super easy to use. And it's been great for like bronzer and blush. I've been using it both ways. This one is my go-to favorite brush that I think I might get another one or two of. This is the number 64 diffuser brush. This is beautiful for bronzer, for blush, if you have some powder, if you just need to like make things look a little bit more airbrushed or if you just need to like, it's a diffuser. It's supposed to just like disperse the pigment. So if I'm gone a little heavy with the bronzer, I can put like my powder on top and it just like makes everything look so much seamless. Like earlier today, I kind of went crazy with my blush and then I used this with just a powder and it just like makes the most seamless transitions and it's beautiful. These two ones I haven't used yet. We have the number 30 brush, which is their airbrush shadow. And then we have the number 59, which and then we have the number 57, which is the airbrush detail. Um, I just haven't found a need to use these yet. I feel like this one would be great if you liked like a heavy concealer, but I just haven't used it yet. Um, I kind of want to use it with the contour one to see how that works, but I think it might be a little too small for that. And then the number 30 brush, which is for eyeshadow, which is just a bit big for my liking. So I'm just going to hold off and see. I just haven't had the need to use it yet. Um, this one here has been a really great addition for highlight. It's such a nice, like precise, but not so precise that it looks like a streak. It just is like really easy for highlight. And this is the number, oh, it's the number 98 highlight brush. Um, just a really great shape. The next one is the number 45 precision concealer brush, which, oh my goodness, makes such a difference, especially since I use that color corrector. You can really get in there. It's really tapered, so you can get right up close to the eye, and it's super easy to use and control where your concealer is going, but it just like blends it so effortlessly. This is fantastic, especially if you have like darkness right here. You can really like really get in there and really blend it out, and it just is really, really easy to use. And then I got two eye brushes. We have the number 27, which is the blending brush, and the number 14 shadow brush, and these are also just a good staple. Um, nothing super crazy with their, it's nothing super crazy with their shapes or anything, they're just really easy to use. And so those are the brushes that I got. I think if I was to choose two to recommend to you guys, 
it'd be this one, which is the number 64. And then this one, which is the number 45. So the precision concealer and then the diffuser brush have been the best additions to my collection. Um, and then finally for makeup, I did get three new JD Klo eyeshadows. I just think that's a good thing to just add to my collection. And so I did get three more of crazy colors. Um, the first one is this one here, which is in Bora Bora, which is a bright teal blue. Like if you look at these, they are so stunning. Oh my gosh, it's so pretty. The next one I got was JD Glow's Prismatic, which is a more green, like lime green, but it also has like a blue shift. I used these two together one day and I had so many compliments on my makeup. And then the final one I got was Fairy Acid, which looks like a silver, but when you put it on, it's like so like Tin Man green, like pewter color it's really cool so i did get three more it was just like on a whim there wasn't really any thought process under there then i'm like i like these shadows i need to get a couple more that's all the beauty products that i got it doesn't look like a crazy amount other than like the crazy amount of brushes that i got and then four makeup products and the ones that i got i'm really excited to have and i did end up getting two shirts which i'll show you in that stitch fix video in total again i spent 301 dollars 92 cents in the month of February, 106 of that was clothing for the two tops. The rest of it was beauty products. So I spent only a third of what I spent on my clothing and then two thirds of that on beauty products. Not the way I want it to go, but I am happy with the things that I got. And I'm not surprised again because I was so heavily focused on beauty and wearing like the same costume every single day that I didn't need to worry about clothing. For the month of March, I do have $89.22 that I'm moving over into the month of March. And so total, I have $289, almost $300 to use. Thank you so much for coming by today. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. I would love to know if you are doing a beauty budget this year or if you're doing a no buy, low buy, whatever you're doing. And I would love to support you. So thank you so much for coming by and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye guys.